What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell and this is The End Times. I saw a comment the other day asking about Gog and Magog and its connection to the abomination of desolation. So let's just dive right into this. The main prophecy of Gog and Magog can be found in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 through 10. It says, And when the thousand years were ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Gog and Magog, according to John's revelation, will take place after the Great Tribulation, the second coming of Christ, and the wrath of God, whereas the abomination of desolation is a sign of the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Let's read that real quick. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15 through 22. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house and let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak and alas for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a sabbath for there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now no and never will be and if those days had not been cut short no human being would be saved but for the sake of the elect those days will be cut short I personally believe the abomination of desolation is the image of the beast spoken of in Revelation chapter 13 verses 14 through 18, but we'll go into more detail about that in another video. Now according to Jesus, his coming for his bride isn't until after the great tribulation, Matthew 24, 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. After Jesus comes back for his own, which only happens one time, the wrath of God will take place. The wrath of God is seven bowls of his wrath poured out on those who didn't accept him before his coming. Revelation chapter 16. During these seven bowls of his wrath, the people can look into heaven and see the Lamb of God seated on his throne. Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 through 17. They will also refuse to repent and instead curse God for the plagues poured out in his wrath. Revelation 16, 9, Revelation 16, 21. Now after the wrath of God, Jesus returns for the battle at Armageddon. Revelation chapter 19, verse 17 through 21. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. With a loud voice, he called out to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. And the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse. And all the birds were gorged with their flesh. At the battle of Armageddon, the beast and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. The kings of the earth, those who the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon demonically convinced to go to war, Revelation 16, 12 through 16, will be killed along with all their armies. After this takes place, Satan is bound for a thousand years and those of us who were taken up at the second coming of Christ will reign with Christ on this earth during those thousand years, Revelation 20, 1 through 6. Now, after the thousand-year reign of Christ, Satan will be released one more time. This is where Gog and Magog enter the scene. Let's read those verses one more time. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 through 10. 
And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beasts and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The camp of the saints, the beloved city, is the new Jerusalem that represents both a physical city and the bride of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 21 verses 9 through 27. The camp of the saints, the new Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven before the thousand year reign of Christ, which comes after Satan is bound in the bottomless pit for that time period. This now begs the question, who is at Gog and Magog for Satan to tempt? Well, we know it's not the Bride of Christ because we are perfected, given new eternal bodies bearing the very image of Jesus at his second coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 42 through 58. During the wrath of God, nobody is recorded as dying. It's not until Jesus returns on his white horse to the battle of Armageddon that the kings of the earth and their armies are killed by the sword in his mouth. So, if it's not the Bride of the Lamb, and it's not the kings of the earth and their armies, then who is it? Well, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 through 19 says, Then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of booths. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up to present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be the plague with which the Lord afflicts the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. There shall be the punishment to Egypt and the punishment to all the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. Those who survived the battle of Armageddon are those who didn't go to war. Only the armies and the kings of those armies that went to war against the Lamb of God died. The others on earth that survived the wrath of God didn't die. These will live on earth during the thousand year reign of Christ. During this time, they will either keep the Feast of Booths and worship Christ, or they will not receive rain on their land, but instead a plague. Now let's take a look at Isaiah's prophecy. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 20. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. During this time, those who went through the wrath of God will continue to live and populate. There will be deaths, but not as we see today. This is why John saw people outside the city. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 through 15 says, Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. This is also why the leaves of the tree of life are healing for the nations. Revelation chapter 22 verse 1 through 2. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. It's not the bride of the Lamb that will need healing. The bride of the Lamb will be perfected with imperishable, immortal bodies that cannot be hurt or damaged in any way. It is those who dwell on earth outside the gates and their children and their children's children and so on that will need the healing from the leaves of the tree of life. It will also be them and their descendants that will be deceived at Gog and Magog after the thousand years has been completed and Satan is released. And when they're deceived, they will storm the new Jerusalem, to which fire will come down from heaven and consume them all instantaneously. Then Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet already were. After this will be the last judgment and those whose names aren't written in the Lamb's book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire for all eternity. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 through 15. Now while you guys ponder all of that, let's sum everything up real quick. The abomination of desolation will be a sign that the great tribulation 
tribulation is about to begin. This is the image of the beast spoken of in Revelation chapter 13. After the tribulation, Jesus will return to collect his bride and take her home. Then will come the wrath of God, which are seven bowls of plagues. During the wrath of God, no one dies and no one repents. Instead, they curse God because of the severity of the plagues. After the wrath of God is completed, Jesus will return again for the battle of Armageddon. The beast and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. The kings of the earth and their armies will be killed by the sword that comes out of the mouth of Christ, and Satan will be bound for a thousand years. After Satan is bound, the bride of the Lamb, that is the new Jerusalem, which is also a physical city, will come down out of heaven and reign with Christ during those thousand years. During this time, those who didn't go to war at Armageddon will be obligated to keep the Feast of Booths and worship the Lamb because if they don't, they won't receive rain on their land and instead they will receive a plague. They'll live full lives and they'll have children and their children will have children and so on and so forth until the end of the thousand years. And he will go to those at Gog and Magog to deceive them. Those who were deceived will attack the new Jerusalem, but fire will come down from heaven and burn them up instantaneously. Then Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire and the last judgment will take place. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to further grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website, holdtohope.org or join our telegram channel, Hold to hope where you will also receive an encouraging verse quote and lyric of the day if there's ever a video of ours taken down on youtube that you want to see it'll always be available on our website telegram channel and rumble so do with that information as you see fit and until next time god bless